So you're probably guessing that we are going to implement the golden search technique into Excel to make a live solution. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this screencast. So I've set this up. This is a modification of a spreadsheet that I showed in one of the earlier screencasts. And what I've got, I've changed the problem statement around a little bit. Instead of having 2,640 feet or a half mile uh, of the swamp and the forest and exactly one mile for the the uh, the width here instead what I'm doing is I'm turning that into s for the swamp we can change that distance f for the forest and d for this total distance here to the getaway car now the equation for that is shown here and I have put in cells up here and I've named these cells up here in the name box s f and d and I've put in a function here for the time so this is just this formula here that's going to give us the time depending upon these different parameters. But that's just the time for the given theta here that I've, I have guessed there. And you see that when I change theta, I change the time. So just like we did before, there's gonna be some sort of optimal angle that the escapee can choose. And that's going to determine then through this equation, the time that it takes to get to the getaway car. So as I showed in a previous screencast, we can solve this scenario using the solver tool. So we're trying to set the time to a minimum by changing the angle here. And when we do that, actually I don't think this is quite right, C2, we want that to be the time to a minimum by changing the angle. And I press solve and it churns through and finds a solution. So with these particular parameters, the convict should choose an angle of 65 degrees to get through the swamp and the forest. And again, the swamp, he can travel two feet per second, and in the forest, he can travel four feet per second. And that's where we get the two and the four from. But we wanna make this so it's a live solution. In other words, if I change S to something like 3000, then it'll automatically change. You see that it automatically changes the time, but it doesn't automatically adjust the angle. In order for us to adjust the angle such that we minimize time we have to go back up here into the solver tool and we have to click solve so this is not a live solution and to make it a live solution we're going to implement the golden search technique so i've got this set up to put in our golden section search algorithm i've got my golden ratio up here which is the square root of five minus one quantity divided by two i've named that gr up here in the name box now when you're setting this up, you always have to sort of realize that these values here, the a, b, d, x1, x2, correspond to the independent variable that you're trying to, um, that, you can that you can change, so you can independently change that has an effect on the output. So the thing that you can change, the thing that you are adjusting is theta, which is the degrees. So that's the independent variable in this function here. And then the output is the time. So the minimum theta, theta in this example would, would usually be, I guess, between the, the smallest you could ever have would be zero and the largest you would ever have would be 90. And so I'm gonna put this in in terms of degrees. And it actually turns out that the sine of zero radians or degrees is, uh, is zero. So in here we would be dividing by zero. So I'm just gonna make this, I'm just gonna use one degree. D is equal to the golden ratio times B minus A. X1 is equal to A plus D. X2 is equal to B minus D. F of X1 is just taking X1. Remember X1, X2, A, B, these are our thetas. So I'm plugging that, I'm plugging X1 into this function above, making sure to convert the degrees, because these are all in degrees, to radians using the radians function and we get f of x1, and I can just copy this, control C, and paste it there. We have our conditional statement to set the new a in the next iteration. So if f of x1 is less than f of x2, we're going to be cutting out a portion on the left part, and in that case, if that's true, then the new a is going to be x2, otherwise it's just gonna be the old a, and now I can put my conditional statement in here for the next B. So if f of x1 is less than f of x2, again, we're, we're removing part on the left side. And in that case, the new B is just going to be the old B, 
otherwise it's going to be x1. Now I can just take this part, this is all just relative formulas, and then I can take the entire row here and I can double click. And you notice that as we get down towards the tenth iteration, the average of x1 and x2 is a good approximation of the result. I think we should probably go, the precision here is not what uh, we would want, so I'm just going to go another 10 iterations, which is really easy to do in Excel. I'm going to double click on this, and you see after a total of 20 iterations, we're getting down to something uh, that's quite reasonable, 65.51. Now, what I'm going to do up here, I'm going to go ahead and erase these, because we're not using those anymore, and I'm going to put a pointer formula. The result here is going to be the average of x1 and x2 at the last iteration. So I'm just kind of making a pointer formula and the time is going to be the average of f of x1 and f of x2. Now these are in seconds so I'm going to do the average of that but then I'm going to divide by 60 to convert to minutes and that's exactly what we got using the solver tool. So now for the really exciting part, remember that the solver tool is not a live solution. If you change the different parameters using the solver tool, it does not automatically update the theta. It will update the time because that's just a formula here, but then you have to rerun the solver in order to minimize theta. What we can do using this technique is I can, it's a live solution, so I can automatically change these values on the spreadsheet. When I press enter, it goes through 20 rounds of the golden search technique, and then it's going to find the angle theta that minimizes the time. So when I press enter, it automatically goes through that. And I can change other things. I can change this to something like 3500, and it automatically calculates the new solution. So it's a live solution of an optimization problem, uh, similar to what we did using the live solution of the bisection method. And this does not use any sort of Visual Basic. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching.